that all the weird stares I'm getting right now. <laughs> you see, on a roller coaster, when I scream my heart out, my voice travels far, far away from me. But in this room, it bounces back. It bounces back to me from different directions, almost giving me an illusion that I'm not alone. But in fact, I am alone on the stage. Talk. <laughs> Today, however, I'm not just here to talk about echoes or the way it bounces off walls and the cool physics behind sound. I'm here to talk about a metaphorical echo, specifically a metaphorical echo chamber, a place where sound bounces off the walls and comes back with you. This metaphorical echo chamber does not have walls. This metaphorical echo chamber does not have boundaries. This is an echo chamber of ideologies, thoughts, and perspectives. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Like, where are my thoughts, ideologies, and perspectives going to bounce back at me from? Let me take the biggest example we have out there, the internet. The internet, according to Statista, has 4.66 billion users. That means more than half the world. How is it that there's an echo chamber? This is because of something known as an algorithm. And that's specifically on social media. In general definition, an algorithm is a set of instructions. But when we put it in terms of social media, it's basically what decides what comes on your feed and what does not. It decides what you like based on what you've liked before and gives you what you would like on a silver platter. So to look at that more simply, in this very room, I want to know how many people think dogs are better than cats with a show of hands. Whoa. And on the other side, I want to know how many people think cats are better than dogs. Whoa. With this booing, I can prove to you that we can create two distinct echo chambers in this very room. So let's take the dog lovers for our first example. You're a dog lover. You're scrolling through your Instagram feed. How likely are you to double tap, to like, a picture that tells you that cats are the superior domesticated animal. I'm going to take that for a zero. And how does that create an echo chamber? Well, slowly, you ignore posts about cats. And eventually, they disappear. You forget that cat lovers exist. Dog lovers are the only population of this world. And you sink deeper and deeper into this void that say dogs are the best. Until one day you wake up and you are in a cult worshiping dogs. <laughs> now, a cult worshiping dogs doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it's not that extreme. The thing is, echo chambers can lead to extremism. And I'm going to show you with an example here. That was a viral meme for a very long time. And as comical it is, as it is, if you look at the reality behind it, that's a little kid vowing to destroy an entire nation and its people. That is proof of what echo chambers can do. He has grown up in an echo chamber that has taught him, taught him that an entire country and its people don't deserve to exist. And I'm not just being offended because it's like he's offending my country. Because on my side of the border, the negativity is not any less. If we look at the statistics, 85% of Indians hold anti-Pakistani sentiments. And 65% of Pakistanis hold anti-Indian sentiments. For such large proportions of a country to hold negativity towards another, echo chambers are the only reasoning we can say. They have heard the same ideologies being told to them growing up for decades till that's all they know, till the line between what is really truth and what is truth to them has been blurred. That is not the only example I have here today. So this is a scene from the movie Harriet, which is on slavery in the US. And what we see is a priest talking to a group of slaves. And he says, I quote, slaves obey your earthly masters in everything and do, do it not only 
when their eye is on you to curry their favor, but with sincerity of the heart and reverence for the Lord. That is a saying from the Bible verse that has been used to justify something as inhumane as slavery, giving power of one human being over other human beings. That is how echo chambers can lead to extremism. So how are we gonna escape this curse? How are we gonna escape just seeing one side of a six-faced die? Because if we step out of this bubble, it's not going to be pretty. How willing are we to burst ourselves out of this chamber? How willing are we to open conversations that are so controversial you would not want to hear the other side? Unfortunately, it's all on us. The ball is on our side of the court. We are who have to step out of this bubble ourselves. And when we do, it's going to be loud. It's going to be chaotic. We're going to have to hear things that we do not want to hear. But unless we accept these opinions, the existence of these opinions, you don't need to agree with it. Just accept that they exist. We're not going to have a world where we listen to each other. There isn't going to be willingness to learn. On that note, I want to ask everyone here to go home today, especially the dog lovers and type. Why are cats better than dogs? Write those horrendous words down, even if every cell in your body refuses to let you do so. Because you might find that cats are not so bad after all. Or on the other hand, you might find that the very reasons that you see before you are why you hate cats in the first place. Whatever your result is, whatever it may be, you know the whole picture. You know what you believe in and what you don't. And unless you see the whole picture, how is your opinion even justified? Thank you.